So we're back at Leicester. Um, the customer's going to have um, a shed, basically, but because I've got some materials left, I've got some cedar left, which has now become shed grade. We're going to make a bit of a posh shed. So I'll show you around. We're going to use these 6x2 green treated joists for the base. Um, John and Adam are constructing the base, so it's eight foot by five foot, eight foot long, obviously five foot wide. Um, it's going to sit on this piece of land here. It's going to butt up to there, and what we're going to do, we're going to fly the cedar through. So what's going to happen is the cedar's going to hit the building and be part of the building, and the roof's going to slope this way as well. Um, we're going to sit this on 4 before 4 posts, bedded into the floor. So what they're doing with this frame, they're going to create this frame at the 6 2 green treated, and they're going to put uh, four screws on each side, and that'll give us the base, and we'll go from there. Right, so what I'm going to do, um, so there's five of us now. Obviously, I've explained before that people have left. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce you to every team member as well. Obviously, you know me. Um, John has been here since the start, haven't you, John? Yeah. Um, how long have you been here now, John? John, John, have a look. How long have you been here, mate? I've been here years when we used to do extensions and stuff like that also. Um, I've, known John, years, I I've known John all my life, uh, more or less, haven't I, John? You have, yeah, since we were kids. We've had a few fallouts, haven't we? Yeah, we have, but we always make up. So John John is my right-hand man, basically. Um, like I say, he's been here forever, and he will stay here forever, hopefully, won't you, John? Yeah. Jenny is here how many months now? Jesus, uh, about six, seven, six, seven months now. Jesus doesn't work here anymore. No. Right? <laughs> right, so Jen's been here nearly six months, and she's a joiner. She's level, she's level two, and she's improving daily. Are you happy here, Jen? Are you happy with John, Jen? Very happy with John. Right, okay. Next in line we have Adam, which is our in-house electrician. Say hello, Adam. Hello. Right, how long have you been here? Uh, 18 months. 18 months. Are you happy here? You staying? No, I hate it. I'm going. Right, okay. So, <laughs> and then we have Davey. Davey has been here. How long, Davey? Two, three months. Two, three months. Do you like it here? Yeah, I enjoy like it. Like I said before, Davey is um, he's an electrician, had two years at college. Yeah. Passed with distinction, didn't you? Yeah. And Davey's just had his first driving lesson last night. How did that go, Davey? Two days ago. Two hey, days ago. Good though, thank you. And he's happy with that. So, are you staying, Davey? Yeah, of course. But yeah. Davey wants to move to join me, don't you, possibly? I do. Okay. And who are you, Mr. Griffin? I am William Griffin, aka Liam Griffin, aka the little shouty Yorkshire man, aka hybrid roof idiot. It's like your um, okay, aka same same difference, isn't it? No, it's aka. <laughs> Don't know. Okay, I'm obviously old school, um, and I do say aka, whereas <laughs> and you say Jen Ken Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> instead of KFC, and Jen Jen's got loads of street, aren't you, Jen? <laughs> so that's the team um, and I'm really happy with this team and we're going to move forward with this team and be as successful as we always have tried to be and produce quality builds right through to the end. So what we're going to do today, we're going to blast this shed up. I will take a breath or two as I go along. Um, I'm going to show you how we're going to make it. We're going to make it practically the same construction as the garden room, but obviously it won't be insulated because it is just a shed at the end of the day, but it's going to be a glorified shed and possibly the best shed you've seen in a long time. We good? Right, so we've, we've dug the, uh, the holes for the base. There's six holes in there. Uh, they're about four or five hundred deep or something like that. We've hit solid ground, so we're happy with that. What we're going to do now, we're going to put some weed membrane over the top of it, and then we're going to locate the holes and cut them out, offer the frame back over, and then Jen's going to cut the post to size, and we're going to concrete them in. But I'm also going to show you what we're going to do with them as well. Um, Adam, do you want to cut that there? So once we've cut this, I'll stretch it out, and then I'll locate these holes and cut and all where they're going to be. We don't normally let Adam use a knife, he's not very competent, are you Adam? We don't normally let Liam do the jobs either. <laughs> Ooh, right, come on. Jen, do you want to pull that side for us please? Right, so you can see Adam there, he's located the hole, I'm just going to cut it out so that we can get the post in. And then what we'll do once we've cut all them, we will then concrete the pot in. David, can you get me six rubble bags, please? Right, so there's, there's the six holes cut out there now. Um, I'll get them off in a minute, David. What we're going to do now is put the frame over. Do you want to sort the hose pipe out, Jen, if there's one up there? I don't know if there is. There should be, I think. 
Thank you. So the way, way we're doing this, um, we're going to position it so we can still get behind to clad it. Oh, can you get all your posts in there, Adam? Yeah. I think it wants to go more that way, doesn't it? That one's a bit tight there. Right, so we've dug the holes, we've put the weed membrane down. What we're going to do now, we're going to use these four before treated posts. I'm going to put them in these rubble sacks. Um, that will then keep the water off the posts from it's coming out of the ground, um, which will obviously increase the longevity of the posts. I mean, what you've got to bear in mind is this is a shed. It's not a garden room, so we're all good at that. And what I've done there, I've just secured that post to the side of there just while we get the um, post mix in and get it all bedded in and tight. And then what we'll do then, we'll, once all them four posts in, then we'll level it up and get it all level, then we'll put a centre post in as well. So Jen and Adam are going around putting post mix in these holes. Right, so we've got the frame, it's all secure at the base now. We're ready to go. Um, well, you're going to use the egg protect that I've had in my garden for some time now. Um, it's a bit hard to get hold of at the moment. So we're just going to do it exactly the same way. We've got a hammer. We're going to do it exactly the same way we would if we were building the garden room. The same construction. That's fine. Nail that, please, Jen. Right, Adam. Cut me a board in half. Oh, no, give me that, give me that, give me that. Sorry, I've sent you the wrong way with it. That was my fault. Every day is a school day. Right, get that one on there. Right, so we're building these walls exactly the same. Walk it straight over there and straight on. It's the same way we would our garden room walls. Build a frame on the floor, square it off with the OSB, which you'll have watched us do before. Break your leg. Are you there, Adam? Are you flush? Are you good? Right, and what we're going to do, we're going to screw this down as well. Where did them 100mm screws go? You just threw me them, didn't you, Jen? Uh, just, I'm going to screw it. Jen's going to follow behind and nail it down. Exactly the same scenario. And because we built that wall square, when we build this wall square and butt them up to each other, they will be plumb and true. But the ring cut nails, they're no good in them guns. Tell the camera. Right, ring cut nails, let me see if I can show you. Um, come here, Jen. Right, we've got two lots of nails. Um, these have got little ring cuts on, can you see that? Little yeah. circular annular rings, um, and these are smooth. The smooth fire all the way, and the Paslow Iron 350 Plus, they don't. They end up sticking out, and we have to nail them in. So I don't know why we've even got them, but they're the way forward. Um, the reason why I know that is because I didn't know it forever, and then I seen it on um, on TikTok. Facebook or something. Or was it TikTok? I don't know. No, no, no. Did we just experience it ourselves? We might have experienced it ourselves, Jen. Sure, we, we use John's John's gun in it. Had the smooth one. The smooth ones in. And they went straight in. There you go, straight no, in, baby. Like Right, is he cutting that then? Right. Push, Adam, kick yours in. 
Is yours in, John? Yeah. You don't have to go fast, David, just because we do. John, it's fine if you've got smooth nails. Absolutely spot on. Right, so what we've done, we've built this wall, same as garden room, same structure. I'm going to go really fast, it's getting late, and we're going to go home, and everyone looks gone. We've used 5 by 2 on the roof as well. It's basically what I've had left over from other jobs as well. We're using OSB free roofing board. So what's going to happen, the roof pitches that way. Any rain's going to come down, hit the cedar, drop on there. I'm going to put a flash in there. I'm going to run the rubber up the roof as well. I'm going to send the water down that way into a gutter. I'll take a breath. And then what we're going to do, we're going to astroturf this roof. We're also going to astroturf that roof. And the whole building will tie in together. We've got an overhang on the roof there as well. We're going to have some downlighters. We're going to have a cedar clad door over there, which Jenny's going to make. And... Where are we? Um, and internally we're going to OSB it, we're going to put um, a light in it, we're going to put a socket in it, we're going to put the control for the TV and possibly the modem as well. So that's it, I'm going to board this roof really quick, there's massive wasps everywhere now. Um, and that's it Jen, isn't it? So you keep filming. Right, on this occasion, I am not going to glue the roof. For two reasons. It's only a shed, and the second reason is because we won't have time for the five minute glue to go off, and we won't be able to get the rubber down, which we need to today to make this building watertight. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to offer that up there, like such. Watch your fingers, John. There we go. He's going to mount that end, I'm going to mount that end. I'm going to flip it over, cut it. You marked it, John? Flipping reverse sick, Missy Elliot. What, John? Which bit, John? Yeah, we'll leave them there. David, David wants to skip them. We've got room in skip. No idea why, but there's a lot of wasps arrived from nowhere. John, are we good there? Mortar John, we good? Perfect. Probably a mill short, which is good. Right. We're using 63mm oh, six, ring cut nails on this. No, we're going to have to call them, don't we? I'll have to watch that. You got an armor job? John. Yeah, please, mate. Cheers. You want, Jen? Yeah, we'll sand it. Yeah. I just want to get the rubber over it tonight to protect it. Obviously, you don't want to get your OSB free roofing boards wet. Um, a little bit of rain's not going to hurt them, but loads of rain will stop your rubber gluing to them properly. Um, Right, John, you ready? Watch yeah. your fingers.
Right, so what we're going to do, um, I'm going to take that slate lat off, I'm going to put that slate lat somewhere up there, and what I'll do, I'll put a rip of OSB free. Imagine that's your OSB free, so that'll be fixed to that slate lat. So the rubber will then go like this, it'll then go up the OSB free and stick over the top. The slate lat will drop down onto there then as well. So the cedar will run down there like that, it'll go over the OSB free, which will be there, and hit the rubber. Obviously the rubber will have an upstand then of 100 mil, and any water that runs down there will run on there and run down the roof and away from the garden room and away from the shed. So that is it. Um, that, that's your roof there. What we're going to do now is give this... Uh, they're going to start tidying away. Me and Jen are going to give it a quick wipe, uh, rub down and we're going to get the rubber over it temporarily tonight. Tomorrow we'll bond it down and we'll put the grass on the roof of this and the grass on the roof of this as well. And that will be the, the structure of your shed, basically, glorified shed. We've got a load of cedar over there that has come from other jobs. It's not the best quality, so it's practically shed grade, but we're gonna give it a sand up and make it look real tidy anyway. We're gonna drop metal on the black as black. We're gonna drop metal on the back as well. So literally it'll be a mini version of this garden room. Right, you can see the AstroTurf, it's laid down like that. So as the sun gets on this, and we'll also brush it as well, it will stand up like that. Um, and look more realistic like grass. Now, you, the guy who, who supplied me told me that you want to, so if you're looking at the house, which is over there, so the direction of view from the house is pointing at it. So when it grains up like that in the sun, it looks like real grass. He says if you put it the other way and it's laid down like that from the view of the house, it looks more plasticky, which obviously we don't want. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this film off here and then I'm going to roll it out and then we're going to position it um, on the roof the best we can um, and I'll explain why we're going to do that as well because what we're going to do obviously it's too long so we're going to trim it and I'm also going to show you how to trim it as well so I'll take this plastic off first I'll then roll it out and then you'll be able to see how I trim it and why we've positioned it in the position we have as well because obviously at the sides there we're going to put the curb trim on which will um, which will trap the grass down to the roof but at the back where the two part gutter trim is where Jen is there now we obviously can't put any kind of fixing on it so we're going to use some CT1 to fix it down to the rubber um, I've done a test piece on that and I'll show you that as well um, I did a test piece basically because I obviously don't want to put it down and find out that it's burnt a hole through the rubber overnight um, but the CT1 works fine so if Jen just pops out away a little bit I'll roll this out now um, on this occasion this roof's already been plastered, so I'm not overly happy about walking over the roof while it's been plastered. Um, but we've never had a crack yet, so we'll see. This is where I roll this out and it's not long enough, isn't it, Jen? But it is. There you go. Right, so that's long enough. Um, what I've done, I've brought it up on the cardboard roll because that makes it a lot easier to get it up. So what will happen now is, you can see there, it's practically straight with the roof. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull it. Jen's just going to step off there a minute. Um, and I'm just going to pull it. Um, obviously, the weight of it stopping me from pulling it now. I thought I'd be able to pull it, but I'm not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the perimeter off because it's too big, which will... The, obviously, the, 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 grass, the grass is folded over. I've, yeah, all right. Well, Jen's saying to me, why don't I just fold it over? And that makes perfect sense. So I will just fold it over. Um, We've got like at least a metre hanging down there, which obviously is stopping me from pulling the grass into the position I want it to go in. Um, it's got a rubber backing on the grass, so whichever way you look at it, it's going to enhance the length, the lifespan of your roof, which obviously is a good thing. Can you see the holes in it there, Jen, for the water to run down through? Yeah. So they're the drainage holes that are in the grass. Um, obviously, the water will run through. It'll hit the rubber roof below and it'll drain off as well. So if Jen just moves back there, I should be able to pull this over into position now. Which I can. Right, so you can see there now, it's running just along the roof edge but what I'm going to do I'm just going to pull it forward can you see can you see there Jen that's what I'm looking for like maybe 10 mil exposed of the rubber um, and we're going to CT1 that down but I'll, I'll also explain how I'm going to CT1 it down because it's it's important that it's um, that it's glued down in a particular way because we don't want it to hold water right um, I don't know if Jen can just see now I've maneuvered the grass so although the grass looks like it's going to the end if I just peel back 
the grass there. We've got about a 10 mil strip all the way along, which is good, yeah? Happy with that. Um, I'm also going to show you how to put on this two-pack gut trimmer now because I know some people are struggling with getting that on. There's a little bit of a technique, but not much to be fair. Um, it's not that much of a struggle. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to push this grass over um, and then I'm going to go around and trim it so it's like 50 mil, maybe too big. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to trim it to size as well. The reason why I'm crawling slowly like that is I don't want to put loads of pressure on the roof for fear of cracking the plaster. We would normally put this grass on before it got skimmed, but in this particular occasion, we didn't have that opportunity. Um, I'm stood over the roof overhang here, so that's fine. Again, with the sides. Um, I'm just cutting it with a Stanley knife. Can you see that, Jen? Yeah, just cutting it with a Stanley knife. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go around. I'm gonna trim off some of the excess to make it a little bit easier to work with. If you've, um, if you've ever had a carpet fit, which obviously you will have done, it smells just like when you get a carpet fit in your house, that new carpet smell. But it's a really good quality. I don't know if Jen wants to zoom in on it there and have a look at it. And if, if you just pull your fingers through it, Jen, you can see like there's almost like dead bits of grass in it, which make it look more realistic. Can you see that? Yeah. You are. Right, okay. So, the dead bits of grass obviously give it a realistic touch rather than it just being solid green like what you might have imagined AstroTurf to be a few years, well not a few years ago but some years ago. Um, that's that. Um, if Jen walks over there she'll be able to see the roof of the shed that we're building as well. Can you see that Jen? So we're going to have to surf that as well. Basically, that shed's going to be a mini version of what we've created up here. So what I'm taking care not to do, we've obviously got our UPV soffit on here. Sorry, John. And what I don't want to do is catch it with my knife and cut through that. Right, so that there is trimmed as far as what I'm going to trim it anyway. Right. The weight of the grass on the roof will stop you from moving it, so you can quite easily peel back parts of it because you're not gonna you're not gonna move it basically. Very much like when you rubber roofed it, um, the weight of the rubber holds it in position. So there you go. That's that's that. It's almost where I want it to be. Um, I'll just tell you something about it if you're thinking about doing this. So when you lay it. Um, you're going to put your curb trim over there, which is going to mechanically trap that down. We're going to CT1 that there, but I'm not going to put any fixing in the middle whatsoever. And the reason behind that being is, when the sun gets on it, because it is rubber, it will stretch and expand. So, a little bit of a downside to it, but it's not that much. You will get ripples in it when it's a hot day, but when it's cold, it will um, return back to its original size. So that's the only downside on that. So, basically what we're going to do now, we're going to go around the edges and I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut them to the right... Um, to the right. Um, obviously, let me explain that a little bit better. What we're going to do, we're going to go around and we're going to show you how I'm going to cut it to the edge because obviously that rubber needs to sit down like that. The P trim will sit on there then. Um, but we want the grass just to stop there. Just so, Can you see the edge of the fascia there, Jen? So we'll, we'll stop the grass just there all the way around. Then the P trim will mechanically hold it. Um, there's a 25 mil pile on this. You can see it there, look. See, it actually looks like real grass. It's, it feels like real grass as well. It's a really nice quality one. Um, so the 25 mil pile is the same height as the upstand on the curb trim. So that curb trim will run flush with the top of the grass. Right, the easiest way I've found to cut the grass um, to, the, to the size you want. So there, there's, there's the perimeter of the roof there. Can you see that? Yeah, and there's the grass cut just fractionally short back from the perimeter of the roof. So when the pea trim goes over there, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to hold that down. So the easiest way I found to do that is to get a spirit level. So obviously you don't want to cut your, your, um, your rubber roof. So I've got my spirit level. I've found the end of the building there. Yeah? yeah. So my spirit level's flush with the end of the building. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to pull my level back about three mil. Can you see that, Jen? Look. Yeah. yeah, so my level's back three mil. And the reason for that being is that when I put my grass like that, it rises up above the level 
So that three mil then should then give me enough by the time the grass goes down, it should push it to where it wants to go, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a Stanley knife, and I'm just going to use the edge of the level as a guide. I'm just running the knife down the level like that, and I'm keeping pressure on the grass and on the level, not there, because if I push there, it'll, cut, it'll pull that back and make that shorter, which is not what I want. So I'm just going to cut that down like that. There you go. And now, when I take that off there, that then should be, there you go, look, it's absolutely perfect along with the line of the roof. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to let that relax a little bit. I've cut it now to the size. Like I said before, the weight of the grass is going to stop it from moving anywhere, so it's not going to be an issue. I'm going to get some CT1 and I'm going to show you how we're going to bond it down and put the P-trims on it right, as well. Right, so I tested a bit of this grass uh, two days ago now on a bit of rubber and I've fixed it down with this CT1. It's expensive, it's £12 a tube. Um, it's not brilliant for this application, but it holds it enough. I've pulled that apart there. It's actually bonded it to the rubber. Obviously, you've got rubber to rubber, and the CT1 has ma managed to bond it together. So I'm happy enough with that. Um, what we're trying to avoid is wind lift, where if it's really windy, the grass will rip up. Um, this P-trim there, you can see the P-trim, that's 25 mil height there. You see that, David? Yeah, so what's going to happen, that's going to sit on there like that. It will mechanically trap the grass down and prevent any wind uplift there. Um, and that gets nailed to the side. So you've got your rubber there, so any rain comes down, it's going to go through the, the perforation holes in the grass. It's going to hit the rubber and it's going to run off. And that there is mechanically holding that down. But as a fail safe, what I'm also going to do now, I'm going to peel the grass back and I'm going to put some CT1 down it. But what I'm going to do, I don't know if David can see here, David, can you see? Can you see that marker on your thing? Yep. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put stripes of CT1 like that all the way down there. And then what's going to happen there, any rain that's, what I don't want is a barrier. So any rain that comes down is going to hit the CT1 and it's going to run down and continue on its journey down to the bottom and into the gutter. So that's what I'm going to do all the way around the perimeter of the CT1. And on the back here, Dave, if you just want to look over here, mate, if you can just get in there, can you see the back all right? Yeah. So on the back, obviously, this is where the rain is coming now. We want it to go down into the gutter. So again, if I put CT1 all the way along there like that, I'm going to create a dam, which is going to stop the rain, which is not what we want. So again, I'm going to put stripes, diagonal stripes like that. So any rain's going to run down there, it's going to hit the CT1 and then run off into the gutter. You see that all right, David? Yeah. Like that. So I'm going to put diagonal stripes all the way around the building and then I'm going to put it down. And then them diagonal stripes then will bond that seat, that rubber to the grass, which will prevent any wind uplift. And of course, here we've got mechanically fixed anyway, but I'm going to put the CT1 on there as well, just as a fail safe. And I'm not going to do any uh, CT1 in the middle of the building, because as I said before, when the sun gets on it, it expands and it needs somewhere to go, so it'll ripple up. Um, it's not, the, the ripples aren't massive, they're not offensive or anything like that, but they do happen. But like I say, when it cools down, it'll return back to its normal size. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my trims all the way around with my CT1. Right, so what we're going to do with this other roof, this is the shed roof basically. This roof runs that way, so I've created a little upstand there on that. I've bonded that rubber to there as well. So what will happen now, the cedar will drop down there like that. It'll terminate there. That will be grassed as well, so any rain coming off that driving rain will hit the cedar. It will run down there and fall on this roof and then run this way down into the gutter, which will then take it away as well. If Jen wants to have a look up here, she'll see this roof. Um, so that's the grass roof. I mean, love it or hate it, it takes away that big black expanse. So when you're looking out your house window, um, you can see it. I don't, Jen, can you see there? It's, it's sort of all laid down and it doesn't look as, doesn't look as, um, as real as what you might want it to. Yeah. Right, and I'll just show you the camera from this side now. Um, so if you look from this side, there you go, it's a completely different aspect altogether. Um, and that's what will happen now, the sun will raise that up. It's because it's been rolled up for some time, but the sun will raise that up and make it look fantastic as well. Um, like I say, love it or hate it, it is what it is. There you go, Jen. Right, so that's us done for today. Um, tomorrow I'm going to come, I'm going to put the fascias on this. I'll show you around the building in a minute as well. We'll just jump down and I'll show you around. Right, so this is the front of the building. Of course, we've put a cedar soffit on there. They've started to second fix the electrics now. So all the fascia in the roof is complete now. Uh, you can see in here it's been fully skimmed out as well. Um, like I said, they're starting to second fix electrics. We're going to have a 450 high full opening window there. It'll be top hung. All the doors are going to slide this way. There'll be a fully glazed panel there. And on this wall is a picture frame TV, which is going to be powered 
from um, it's a little power unit that comes but I'll explain that in another video but I'll show you where that's going to be as well so what we've done we've attached a shed to it as well basically um, what's going to happen the slate lats are going to run across here this shed is actually independent to this building but the slate lats will run across and we'll cedar that in there so it will look like it's part of the building there'll be a door to it here you can see Jen's put um, a cedar soffit on that as well so what's going to happen now, I'm going to put a fascia on there tomorrow and I'll get the roof grassed as well and finish that detail. There'll be a cedar clad door here as well. Um, that, that will open that way. But we're going to make a different style cedar clad door, so I'll show you that being made as well. Um, this isn't insulated basically because it is a shed, but on that wall over there, there'll be drivers for various LED units and the driver for the TV as well. But we'll always be this full room out as well, so it's all boarded out and it looks tidy and nice. So that'll be your building. Uh, there's two buildings in one, basically. We've got a shed and we've got um, a garden room. If Jen wants to stay up here, stay up here, stay over here. Um, I showed you how we put the base on there. Basically, it's just on four posts, uh, six posts rather, concreted in. Uh, do you want me to start that bit again? Was it, yeah. Can you come out of the deck and light? No, it's, I had to because you, it will pitch black. Okay, now. right, just stay there then, yeah. Right, so I showed you how we did the shed. Um, it's basically six by twos, sat on six posts, concrete in the ground with um, rubble sacks around them as well. Like I say, this will be seeded into that building and it'll look like the same building, although it's two completely independent buildings that aren't actually attached to each other. But on two different levels in this garden, it's going to look fantastic as well. I'm going to be, it'll be, it'll be good and more, Jen, we'll be happy with that. Um, I'm thinking I might do something. Something different on this wall, I haven't decided yet, but we've got quite a lot of shed grade cedar, which um, I did explain to the customer, it's not as good a quality as what we normally use, but it's still good quality, it's really expensive stuff and we didn't want to throw it away, so we are going to use it. So I'm thinking of doing something a bit different on this wall, we've still yet to decide, I'm going to try and think of something this weekend, maybe something with some lights in and something, um, create a nice effect, although it's nowhere is it? it's just at the back end of the garden but it looked nice so if you've enjoyed watching please like and subscribe and don't forget i'm giving away a free dewalt drill um you need to find the video i'll put the video on the end of this video all you've got to do is subscribe and leave a comment like i said yesterday um there's something like four thousand views or something and only 700 people have commented which doesn't make sense i'm giving away a brand new free drill post it anywhere in the country and i'll put 100 pounds in the box as well so that's it. Um, if you'd like to like, subscribe, follow, and leave comments, that'll be great as well. What are you laughing at now? <laughs> Go on, what are you laughing at? You're not talking right. Why am I not, so, I'm not using the right words? I say like, like, subscribe, and I'll say it again. Like, subscribe, follow, send me a message. Right, okay. So if you could do all them things, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere down here or up there, I don't know. If you can do that, that'd be great. Thank you.